Hello, I'm Dan Klimek with Siskin Company, and the safety meeting for today is going to talk about slips, trips, and falls. When we talk about slips, trips, and falls, you might ask the question, hey, what's the big deal? Everybody slips. Everybody can have a little fall. Heck, as a kid, we fell quite a bit. The problem you have is that anytime we deal with a slip, a trip, or a fall, we never really know what the consequence is going to be until we get back in control. Sometimes it can be a very minor kind of nothing. Sometimes it can be a muscle strain, a back injury, some other joint, or depending on if it's a fall, how we land, if we hit our head, those type of things. There have been times that those have resulted in fatalities. So falls are very serious, and we need to take them very seriously. If you look at this picture behind me, what you'll see is that a guy is doing a job, and he's probably thinking he's doing it the safest way he knows how. How does this strike you? Do you see anything wrong with this picture? Hopefully you say, yes, you do. But these are the kind of things that, that I will see, and I'm sure that if you're out on the job, you may see as well, that somebody is doing something that they think is the safest way possible without realizing the danger they're putting themselves into for a fall because of makeshift or bad practices. The kind of hazards that we're going to talk about to prevent slip, trips, and falls are shown here. So the first one I want to just point out is ice and snow. You'll see ice and snow hazards commonly in the wintertime with sidewalks that aren't cleared, areas that are shady, those type of things. The kind of footwear we, we wear makes a big difference with our likelihood of slipping and falling. If we're just walking and we see that an area is a little icy or slippery, do we keep with the same stride or do we shorten our stride up a little bit? because it makes a big difference. If we go with a long stride, we're more likely to slip on ice. If we go with a little shorter stride, we can maintain better control. If we take our hands out of our pockets and just walk, we're able to keep a little more balance. It's also, I mean, the preferred way would be to go out and clean up the ice and the snow and control the, the slip hazards that we may see in the wintertime. We may not be able to do that. In that case, can you report the hazard to others so that they can take care of it? ice and snow. The next thing is ramps and stairs. You always want to use a hand railing because that extra stability. Walking is kind of a, an inherently unbalanced activity. We do it so much we never think about it, but normally as we walk we are putting ourselves into balance and unbalance all the time. So using handrails is important. We want to make sure that stairs and ramps are kept cleaner of clutter, of oil spills, of water, other types of things like that. We, you never want to store stuff on stairs or ramps. If there's a slippery surface, again, report it or can you do something to make it less slippery yourself. If there's areas where the lighting is bad and it's hard to see what the conditions are like, you want to have that taken care of either by reporting it or making the fix. And again, about 80% of accidents occur on stairs. So it's important that we use handrails and that stairs be kept, kept clean and free of clutter. Elevated surfaces. As we're going up and down and working from elevated surfaces, we need to keep in mind that there needs to be handrails or, or, or we use fall protection. And we want to do what we can to make sure that we don't fall from those elevated surfaces. Housekeeping. Absolutely critical. We hear about it all the time. We talk about it. We even know that it's a problem, and if somebody else has created the mess, we're usually the first ones to complain that there's a problem. But can you clean it up yourself? Are you working in a manner to maintain good housekeeping and make sure that you're not creating slip and fall hazards for yourself or for somebody else? Little things like cleaning up spills, reporting or fixing those spills. You keep aisleways clear that if there's changes in the surfaces that you make sure that people can understand what they are, see them, that might be by putting down markers or, or yellow or, or floor mats or other type of things to make sure that we have good surfaces to walk on. When we're working on elevated surfaces, these might be things like ladders or platforms, we want to make sure we use the right ladder for the job. We want to inspect the equipment before use we want to make sure that that ladder is placed on a level, solid surface so the ladder itself is good and solid. And use three points of contact. 
That means either two feet in one hand or two hands in one foot as we climb up and down the ladder as we're going to these elevated surfaces. You never want to use the top rungs of a ladder. A step ladder or a fixed ladder will normally have a decal that will say, do not climb above or do not stand above this area. It's always advisable to tie a ladder off. You want to use a 4 to 1 ratio on a straight ladder. That means that for every 4 feet of vertical height, the base of the ladder is, is 1 foot away from the wall. And then you want to position the equipment so that you kind of, kind of avoid stretching. You want to keep your belt buckled between the side rails of the ladder so you're not overreaching the ladder and possibly causing it to tip or you to fall off. How many times have you ever seen a situation like this? These guys probably know better, but for whatever reason they've decided that they're going to violate this very basic rule. They're going to stand in an unstable position and they're putting themselves at undue risk. Hopefully you're not one of the people that would do something like that. In office areas, we want to keep four floors clear. You want to keep file cabinets closed because somebody will be backing into it or walking into it or not paying attention. You want to watch for people and items behind you. And if you see damaged flooring, you want to get that reported so that it can be repaired. You always want to stay clear of cables. A lot of times cables are strung across floors or across walkways. You want to do something to protect them, pat them, run them out of the way, whatever the case might be. And again, in office areas, a lot of times folks will use chairs, other types of things to get to elevation. Really, you need to have an appropriate ladder to do that. You want to make sure that you're using guardrails and covers around any kind of opening. You want to make sure ladders have non-skid feet. You want to make sure that ladders do not contact or even come close to, to any point of, a, of an electric line. And you don't want to use a step ladder as a straight ladder. You want to use the step ladder per manufacturer's recommendations, which require that the ladder be that the spreader on the ladder be stretched out and that a step ladder be used as a step ladder. When on a ladder, you never want to overreach. And if you're in an area where you're working from an elevation and there's not guardrails, you want to make sure that you're using a full body harness and fall protection per your employer's guidelines so that you are, are going to protect yourself from an extreme fall. Fall protection doesn't necessarily keep you from falling, but it keeps you from falling a great distance. So make sure you understand your employer's policy for using fall protection. So just to review, slips and falls are one of the leading causes of injury any time of the year. When you use ladders and scaffolding, they must be used correctly. When we use that equipment, we're putting ourselves at more risk because many times we just never see using a ladder or scaffolding as any kind of a safety hazard. We always want to practice three points of contact. We always want to make sure that we have handrails and guardrails or that we're using other kinds of fall protection if we're in some area at elevation where we, where we don't have handrails and guardrails. You want to watch where you walk. As simple as that sounds, most of the time we kind of go around and we don't pay a lot of attention to the things that we're doing, where we're stepping, where we're walking. We need to do that. If we pay attention to that, we can many times eliminate the fall hazard. And lastly, you want to clean up messes and spills. Practice good housekeeping. So hopefully these tips will help you prevent slips and falls. This presentation is available at www.gomsca.org.